Hello, this is Chris with Multitech Addiction back again on another Species Spotlight. In today's Species Spotlight, we are going to be talking about the Epistogramma trifasciata, also known as the three banded dwarf cichlid or the three banded dwarf episto. Also, there's another name for it it's the blue Epistogramma. So it has multiple names, but it is a very commonly overlooked and very common epistogramma. So let's go ahead and get to this right now. When it's just you, well, times can be tough. When there's no one there. All right, let me go ahead and get to the specifics about this fish, and then we will talk a little bit more about aquarium keeping for this fish. Uh, this fish is typically gets up to two inches or five to six centimeters. Uh, they prefer a minimum of 25 gallons or larger. Um, they are a lower and middle strata fish for the most part, but they do go everywhere. Uh, they're a pretty good fish when it comes to pH 5.0 to 7.2. Uh, hardness is soft to medium with DH range of 0 to 12 and they have a preferred temperature range of 79 degrees to 84 degrees. They are a moderately easy fish to keep with the exception of the typical pistol issue, not necessarily a problem. Uh, they are very sensitive to water quality so um, you do want to make sure that you do frequent water changes. Now a bit on the specifics of the fish itself to coloration and sexing. The males have a body color of bright metallic blue that continues onto the dorsal, anal, and ventral fins. The upper portion of the dorsal fin is orange or red and the first three to four spines are elongated and show more distinct separation than the rest of the dorsal spines. There is a black eye stripe, however it is not as noticeable as in most species. The females are a pale yellow or brown and have a dark lateral stripe. Females become a brighter yellow when spawning or during brooding care. Sexual dim dimorphish. Let's try that again. Sexual dimorphism. Males are slightly larger than females and display a vibrant blue body color. The females are normally duller yellow in comparison. As in this picture you're seeing right now, that would be a male. Um, so let's see here. A little bit more on the specifics of the actual aquarium keeping on this fish. As I stated previously, they are a fairly easy fish to take care of. Uh, let's see here. Provided adequate cover and structure is available, this species is unfussy with regards to decor with ceramic flower pots and it's a plastic piping and other artificial materials as useful additions. A more natural looking arrangement might consist of a soft sandy substrate with a wood root system or branches placed in such a way that plenty of shady spots and caves are formed. The addition of dried leaf litter provides additional cover in spawning sites and brings with it the growth of beneficial microbe colonies as decomposition occurs. These can provide a valuable secondary food source for the fry, while the tannins and other chemicals released by the decaying leaves aid in simulation of natural conditions. Alder cones may also be used for the latter's purpose. Fairly dim light is recommended and an aquatic plant species that can survive under such conditions such as Microsorum, Taxophyllum, or Cryptocornis SSP, SPP, I mean may be added. While floating vegetation, especially Ceratopteris SPP, is also useful. There is no need to use peat, the collection of which is both unsustainable and environmentally destructive. Filtration may not be too strong. With air-powered sponge filters or similars being adequate, uh, goes without saying that these are fishes these fishes are sensitive to fluctuating organic waste and should never be introduced to biologically immature aquaria. These species also require 
acidic conditions with negligible carbonate hardness and low general hardness. So a reverse osmosis unit or other method of obtaining soft water may need to be employed and this can be further acidified using phosphoric acid or similar if necessary. That said, it is less fussy than some congeners and can withstand slightly soft neutral water with medium with aquarium bread sp specimens more adaptable still. And as previously stated, they have a pro uh, water temperature preference of 79 to 82 degrees or 70 to 25 degrees Celsius, pH of 5 to 7, and a water hardness of 18 to 179 parts per million. Their diet is chiefly carnivorous and feeding mostly on benthic invertebrates in nature, so they do pref prefer frozen foods such as Artemia, Daphnia, Moinia, bloodworms. Um, you can also feed them brine shrimp. Should be offered regularly, although some species will also learn to accept dried alternatives with pelleted products generally preferred to flake. Um, I feed mine flake food and they're quite happy. Let's see here. Captive raised fish are recommended choice for the community aquarium. Wild examples are best maintained alone with small dither fish such as Nanosnobus and ideally should not be mixed with other epistogramma. Um, they are a substrate spawner which normally lays its eggs in crevices or cavities along the decor. Sexually mature males establish territories and react aggressively to other males in the vicinity, though the presence of several females is normally tolerated because they are a harem breeding type species. Meaning it is best to have two females with one male. Post spawning, the male usually returns to protecting the larger territory and courting other females, leaving the female to guard and tend the eggs and fry. Depending on the temperature, the eggs hatch in 36 to 72 hours with the free swimming fry after a few days. All right. So that is the Epistogramma trifasciata. I'm going to go ahead and just leave a few pictures here for you to view a few more. There's a female for you. You see, they are commonly overlooked. They are, without a doubt, in my opinion, the prettiest of the epistogramma. I, I've seen several. I, I had the option to get any one this last weekend. And to be frank with you, that's the one that I picked. I picked a pair. They were $24 at the wet spot. You'll notice... But there is a picture from the wet spot of their their stock, so you know exactly what my my male looked like. But yes, I have me a pair now. I am planning on going and getting one more female because uh, after research, um, I've decided also because this tank is a very empty tank, I need to get another female. I only have, I have my fish in a 40 gallon breeder with a sponge filter and I have set my plants in a, in a position so that with the lighting that I currently have, because I have medium tech lighting on that tank is moderately bright. Um, I'm hoping that it will fill out quite nicely. So that is the the hope so far and there are several places for the fish to hide in that tank so i do plan on getting me another one this weekend possibly two more females it all depends on how many the wet spot currently has but that is my local fish store for those of you that don't live in the portland area you should definitely check out the wet spot online they do ship fish, uh, so you can order them online. You can also get them through Aquabid. Uh, they uh, put 
most of their fish on Aquabed so that you can purchase the fish and have them shipped directly to you. So that would be the Epistogramma trifasciata, also known as the three-banded Episto or three-banded cichlid, three-banded dwarf cichlid, the blue Epistogramma. They have lots of names, but their scientific name is Epistogramma trifasciata. So there you go, guys. Thank you very much. Just remember, we are feeding that addiction one tank at a time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can hit more, get more of these type of videos. And the notification button is vital for you to be notified when I do post a video. I do post fish videos every Monday and Thursday. And I also do live streams on Saturdays and Sundays in the morning, 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for Saturday and 8 a.m. on Sunday. Most streams are an hour in some occasions they are two hours but i just like to say thank you to everyone that has watched the video thus far and what continues to watch my videos i greatly do appreciate every single one of my subscribers and my viewers and i just like to say thank you very much again and you guys have a wonderful day and just remember we're feeding that addiction one take at a time have a wonderful day